Hello everyone, I'm Gabriel Poole for SVN Network. We are here in Tuscany in Punta Ala. Behind me you can see the Isola d'Elba and that little island over there, that's uh, Sparviero. And those three little islets are the so-called three little piglets. It's a beautiful place as you can see. We are the guests of Race Nautica in Punta Ala. Race Nautica is a dealer for the Terranean and the islands of Fontaine Payot. We are here today for another episode of Yes and No. That is a new series uh, by SVN Network. In each episode we present a boat and we ask a representative of a shipyard or dealership to mention five strong points of the boat and we try to mention five strong points of the competition. So uh, the boat we are talking today is uh, Isla 40 and today we have with us Micaela from Race Nautica. Hi, Micaela. Hello, Gabriel. Hi, how are Hi. you? Fine, okay. thanks. Okay, all right. Um, so, uh, as I was saying, uh, we will ask you to mention five strong points of this boat. Uh, just before we go into that, I mean, th we have obvious similarities with the Lucia 40, which is the model that the Isla 40 is replacing. And one thing that uh, everybody notices are the reverse bows, because that's a very striking uh, feature of the boat. So this is a restyling of the Lucia 40, is that correct? Okay, so the, for the Isla 40, uh, it is not a restyling of the Lucia 40, but uh, we have the hulls that is a little bit larger and longer. And uh, on this boat, uh, there is the chance to have uh, the skipper cabin uh, on it. And uh, in the Lucia, there is not this possibility. Okay, where were the skipper cabin? So go? If, you, if you turn right around, okay. the, the skipper cabin is uh, underneath. Yeah. Okay, all right. I don't want to sleep there, but it certainly helps in certain uh, conditions. Yes. But anyway, so the five points. What is the first strong point okay, of the Isla so 40? Let me introduce to you the first feature of this boat. Okay. As you can see in the front, we have this large uh, net. Yes. It is not just uh, a cosmetic net. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, because you were talking about earlier, some uh, shipyard, say the Bali, for example, yeah. not to mention any names, they did away with the nets, and so they have a very large cockpit in front. But Fontaine Payot decided not to do that. Can you explain why? Okay, so to imagine when uh, you are mm -hmm. in EVCs, uh, and there is the, the waves uh, that are uh, slamming uh, under the side of the boat. And so with the net, they're just With the net, uh, the waves uh, go through and it's also another uh, relaxed area of the boat uh, because you can also walk in uh, if uh, I go okay. here. So you, right. you see, you can uh, walk without no problem on the net. I bet kids uh, really love that. Yeah. Okay, you convinced me. Move on to point number two, shall okay. we? Let, okay, let's go to the point number Please two. Please make way. Thank you. Point number two is the helm station. Okay. Gabriel, as you can see on the Isla 40, we have all the maneuver, uh, the three winches, uh, the throttle here in front uh, of the helm station. Yes. And it is quite comfortable, as you can see. Yes. Uh, the Lagoon 40 also has a similar arrangement with the helm station at mid-height. Yes, that's true, but uh, the helm station of the Isla 40 is a little bit spacious. Okay. And uh, moreover, here we have these steps uh, that allows uh, to adjust uh, the, bo the boom and the mail sail. And on the other uh, catamarans uh, uh, of the competitors, we have the steps in front of the boat. That's true, okay. Another key point of the Isla 40 and the helm station in that position is uh, the visibility uh, because from okay. here we can see the four corners of the, the boat. So we can see the two bows uh, and uh, from here we can see also the, the rear and uh, if you bundle from here in this way we can see also the other corner. Okay, uh, that reminds me of the uh, Nautitech Open 40. Okay, they have a very different layout. They have the two wheels, one on the uh, left side, one on the right side, one on the foreboard and one on the starboard. And so that offers, of course, a great visibility when you're navigating, at least on one side. Yeah, but uh, you need someone in front of the boat uh, that uh, pay attention if you are sailing in a bay and there are people who swim. Why do you need another person on the because, other side of the boat? Because uh, you don't see very well the front of the boat uh, okay. from that position. Okay, you don't see very well the other side yeah. of the boat. Okay, well, let's move on to point number three.
point number three is uh, the upper deck and the boom. Right. So, Gabriel, as you can see on the Isla 40, we have uh, a flat uh, upper deck uh, and if we move uh, on one side of the trailer of the main sail, we can uh, enjoy all the space uh, by putting uh, the, uh, some cushion on it. Yeah, that's true. I must say that the Bali cat space, they have an actual cockpit on the upper deck, which you don't have. Yeah, it's true, but uh, for having a real cockpit, uh, we have to have uh, a boom uh, at 2 meters height. On the Bali? On the Bali, oh, yeah. Okay. So it is not so, uh, so safe, because oh, right. on the Isla 40, we can open the lazy bag and the mainsail more easily. That's and true. on the Bali, you have to climb on the mast, okay. and you have to choose uh, a, bull a boom further. Okay, so with a boom, they need a boom further to yeah. go. All right, then let's move on to point number four. Point number four is uh, the mast. Okay, the mast. There it is. Yeah, but the position of the mast. Okay. Fontaine Peugeot decided to put the mast in front of the boat. Okay. Uh, because it is the real DNA also of the sailing boat. Oh, not a multi-hull, you mean? Yeah, not okay. a multi-hull. Okay. And uh, we can put uh, the mast here on that position because uh, the boat uh, is built uh, in sandwich and the boat is quite light uh, and we can uh, counterbalance uh, and putting the mast in this position. Okay. But uh, that means, for example, that you can't have a self-tacking jib. I mean, there's no space for it. We don't have the self-tacking jib. Okay. We have a Genoa with uh, more surface. Okay, but then what are the advantages of the mass in the front? I mean, okay, you don't have the self-tacking. If we, we have go the in, in uh, dinette, uh, I can show you that uh, we don't have the okay. mass in, in the middle of the dinette. All right. And uh, it is well integrated uh, in the dinette. Okay. Well, then let's go below to have us illustrate the point number four. As you can see, the position of the mast inside the dinette, uh, it is well integrated, and we don't have the mast in the middle of the dinette. Okay. Well, that was point number four. Let's move on to point number five. Point number five is the saloon. So, okay. Gabriel, as you can see, we have this wide opening uh, that allows a better communication between uh, the inner saloon and the outside cockpit. And then we have uh, the most famous Fontaine Peugeot signature, which is uh, these roof windows that uh, gives uh, a lot of light uh, in the, the dinette. And last but not the least, uh, we have also the higher quality of the material used for uh, building the boat. Uh, for example, as you can see here, look at uh, the top, uh, the fossils uh, and the cupboards. Okay, yes, to mention the competition, we saw the saloon of the Lagoon 40, it also looked very, very nice. Yes, that's true, but uh, the quality on Fontaine Peugeot is higher. The quality is higher, the price is also higher. Yes, that's true, but uh, if you want a uh, higher quality, you have to pay a little bit more. Okay, well, thank you, Michaela. Thank you to Race Nautica for having us. If you want to visit a boat, check their website at www racenautica.it That's it for today. Uh, the well appointment is for another episode of Yes and No on SVN Network. I'm Gabriel Poole and if you did like the episode, click on like below. Goodbye.